increasing hope, survival and future that people with cystic fibrosis have. I enjoy cooking this good. This relaxation thing, you know. Uh, mucus and gunk off your lungs. 
I also do other sorts of medication like uh, tablets and pills and inhalers and all that sort of stuff. And after that, uh, later in the night, I'll go to things like footy training, and that's twice a week, and I also play footy on the weekends. So quite a busy day, but yeah, keeps me up to scratch. When I come to hospital, I suppose you could say, it's good and it's bad. Um, you're away from your family. Well, I've got mum, but um, I'm, over the two weeks that oh, over the week that I'm here, I've never really seen my um, brother or mates. But um, hospital is something that I've learned to cope with. Um, I know I have to do it, and in the long run, you do feel better coming out of it. My father's a horse trainer, and Sadly, I've got the horse, horse disease in my blood as well as CF. The full gallop in the wind of like 60 kilometers per hour, you're like, well, this is awesome. And once you lose that control, my motto is sit down and look good. <laughs> so <laughs> if you can't hold it, it look good. So yeah, that's what I try and do. We made a deal when Harry approached us to say that he wanted to do an apprenticeship with the jockey. It's always been his dream, so I don't want to be surprised. But um, the deal was that his health had to come first, his school had to come second, and then the apprenticeship third. And if either the first two slip, well, the jockey apprenticeship had to go. I went through physio because I wanted to do something in the health profession to start with, and I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do, but I guess being around physios all the time and seeing like, the work that they do, I guess kind of motivated me that, oh yeah, I could help someone walk, like there's all these different types of physio and I could help a sports star after they, they're injured, like depending on um, what like category I go into, I can help different people for different reasons. When I'm going to tell my friends about it, I basically I let them ask a question. So I'll say what I have, I'll say that, you know, it affects my lungs and so it affects what I can do, but I won't go into full detail, so I'll sort of let them ask any questions and then follow up. So they might ask, you know, what is physio and what do you do? And I might show them one day or just explain it to them. But yeah, I guess I wait for questions rather than go into the full explanation. The mates at school are like real close mates. They, they all know, and they, they don't really care. Um, they're all just like, oh, Harry's in the hospital, he can't come, what a boy doing. And with people that you meet new, they actually don't know, and it's, it is quite hard to tell them. So I try to bring it on to them slowly to show first that I am normal. I've told the people at the apprentice school really close to what I've got. And then say other kids, like they ask, oh, do you smoke, you're always coughing, or do you have asthma? And I say, I've got a really bad case of asthma. And then I'll, go, I'll approach them later on and explain it to them. Um, I've always found a good way of telling people what's wrong. And I've always, everyone, you know, everyone says, oh, that's okay, you know. Um, they're like me, they're able to live with it and um, adjust. Relationships are tough, um, I think. I don't know, on a personal level, for me it is. Um, I do date a lot of girls, but when it comes to that time where you have to tell them you have cystic fibrosis, because you can hide it as long as you can hide it, you know, you, um, you're taking your crown, you can sort of just say, I'll just buy it, and you know, just need to take it every so often. It just keeps me healthy and looking good. Um, but there comes a time where you have to tell them it. I tend to push people away then. Um, I've tried to put that barrier down. Um, but that's probably the hardest thing is telling someone that you're assisting for that you love because you've got you to think that you start seeing them in a, in a serious manner. You start dating for one, two years. Um, of course, you've got to you know, take that next step and get married. Maybe have kids, but that, that scares me. Because um, where do I leave that person where Okay, I do. I, I am healthy now and happy, but two, three years down the track, when we're married, we maybe have a child, or then have twins. So I have twins in the family, and my family, um, and I 